Good morning. Today's class is the continuation for Peter History of Transitution. In the last class, we have seen the construction of uh, this Peter History of Transitution, that is strain gauge, right? Generally, strain gauges are of two types, okay, three types mostly. Okay, so first one is uh, unbonded metal wire strain gauge second one is bonded metal wire strain gauge and in this type there's another thing called bonded metal foil strain gauge and next one is sputter deposited or uh, diffusion type strain gauges next one is semiconductor strain gauge so the types of strain gauges are <clears throat> first one unbonded metal wire strain gauge second one is bonded metal wire strain gauge third one is bonded metal foil strain gauge fourth one is sputter deposited or uh, sputter deposited or uh, uh, diffusion type strain gauge okay and fifth one is fifth one is this uh, semiconductor strain gauge so th this we have discussed in our last class okay this is unbonded metal wire strain gauge unbonded metal wire strain gauge okay in this unbonded metal wire strain gauge means unbonded the strain gauge pattern is not bonded to any surface bonded here means we will use some adhesives gums to bond this strain gauge on the base material okay it is called bonded metal wire strain gauge. In this case, this metallic wire is not bonded. We are not using any gum here to fix this strain gauge pattern on a metallic surface or sorry, on a uh, base surface, base, base material. We are not using any gum here to attach this strain gauge pattern onto the base material onto the base material okay so this is this is example for unbonded metal wire strain gauge okay the same thing it is also example for unbonded strain gauge see here the strain gauge wires are this 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 wire and this wire. These are four wires. Okay, so I will shade you for the purpose of understanding. See here, this is body. Red color thing is body here. Okay, this is body. And uh, this red color one, right? This total, this is a body here, right? See, there is another frame. I will fill it with the uh, uh, blue color, okay? This is another frame. This is another frame, okay?
So what will happen to the strain gauge? See, there is a air gap. There is a air gap. Okay. There is a air gap between or some uh, separation between these two uh, these two uh, bodies okay red color and blue color in between there's another uh, some air gap here okay see here there is a air gap here okay so what will happen if i apply force like this this frame the the frame which is shown in uh, the frame which is shown in uh, blue color will move towards the force the force is this direction this frame will move towards this force direction so what will happen this wire and this wire will elongate and this wire and this wire will compress so if I assume it as a four wires of a four wires of a Wheatstone bridge or four resistors of a Wheatstone bridge. Four resistors of a Wheatstone bridge. If I apply voltage here and if I take output across this like this, so these resistance of this wire, let us say it is R1. Resistance of uh, this wire let us say it is r2 resistance of this wire let us say it is r3 resistance of this wire fourth wire let us say suppose it is r4 previously when i am not applying any force r1 equal to r2 equal to r3 equal to r4 so that bridge is bridge is balanced but now what is happening this wire and this wire are compressing and this wire and this wire are elongated so resistances of this uh, four wires will vary now thus the bridge is said to be unbalanced the bridge is said to be unbalanced since it is unbalanced i will get output current here Output current is a measure of force. This is the operation of a strain gauge we have discussed earlier. But see one thing, these four wires, I am erasing all this, okay, to make you clear with the construction. These four wires, these four wires, are not attached are not attached to means are not uh, uh, bonded means then the name is the four wires then no gum petty a surface me the coda at the can tell you property i call it uh, unbonded at the can chabada ni strain gauge okay now we are moving on to bonded metal wire strain gauge bonded metal wire strain gauge okay bonded metal wire strain gauge so in this a bonded metal wire strain gauge i will take some space here to make you understand i will I, i'm going on to previous slides that because there is much space available here now i'm telling here uh, now i'm telling you about a bonded metal wire strain gauge bonded metal wire strain gauge okay here what i will do is i will take a base material i will take a base material the base material, this base material is made of bakelite, teflon, or a thin sheet of paper. 
okay are thin sheet of paper right this is the base material this base material is made of bake like b a k e l i t e bake like teflon t e f l o n or a thin sheet of paper mostly it is made of bake like and teflon okay so what i am doing is i am i am attaching a strain gauge pattern strain gauge pattern on to this base material by using some gum those gums are polyethyl cellulose polyethyl cellulose bakelite cellulose etc okay polyethyl cellulose or bakelite cellulose etc okay so what i will do is on this base material i will make a strain gauge pattern see here the strain gauge wires are very thin in order of uh, hundreds of uh, uh, 1 by 100 of a millimeter or a micrometer very thin as our human hair went into the sanaga untayandi the wires okay so i will make a pattern like this this is a strain gauge metallic wire now what i am doing is i am i am laying pattern like this i am laying a pattern like this okay see these are now my two ends of a two ends of a strain gauge what i am doing here ఆ స్ట్రెయిన్ గేజ్ వేర్ వైర్ తీసుకొచ్చండి నేను ఈ పేపర్ ఈ బేస్ మెటీరియల్ మీద బేక్ లైట్ మీద ఇలా వూండ్ చేశాను అనమాట ఇలా చుట్టూ చుట్టాను చుట్టూ చుట్టే చేశానంటే అతికిస్తాను దీన్ని ఓకే ఈ మెటాలిక్ వైర్ని ఈ బేస్ మెటీరియల్ మీద అతికిస్తాను గమ్ము పెట్టి ఆ గమ్స్ ఏంటి పాలీ ఇటైల్ చెల్లిలోస్ బేక్ లైట్ చెల్లిలోస్ ఎక్సెట్రా okay this is called bonded metal wire strain gauge bonded metal wire strain gauge why because i am attaching this is bonded bonded it is unbonded ikkada dinna atikichaledandi dinni jarigi kuda dinni atikinchanu so why we are you uh, why we are uh, manufacturing these types of strain gauges ante for example for example i want to measure force by using this unbonded strain gauge unbonded strain gauge. and and the force is in z direction now for example let us take see i am drawing coordinates this is x coordinate this is y coordinate and the coordinate which is uh, coming out from the from your mobile screen to yourself is a z coordinate meer ipudu mobile ni chustundi in z coordinate chustunnarandi x z coordinates so here in this example i am taking force in x direction 
okay for example if i want to measure force in z direction this is not suitable and in previous example also this also it's not suitable to measure a uh, force in x and y directions so for this purpose i am moving on to bonded metal y strain cases here i can measure force in x direction y direction or z direction right and moreover and moreover if you see what happens if force is applied on this let us check. let us check if force is applied here in z direction in z direction okay if force is applied here then what will happen what will happen this since this base material is made of bakelite teflon etc since this possess this materials possess some elastic properties that these material this base material will you display uh, will bend like this okay this is okay it will bend like this man pustakane majjiki vunchite ela untundandi ala bend avutundi ala bend ayina apude em avutundi ante since this is strain gauge pattern since this is strain gauge pattern okay strain gauge pattern kuda bend avutundi bend avadam valla em avutundi ante length of strain gauge will increase since length increases since r equal to rho l by a since r equal to rho l by a if i increase length by this what will happen resistance of material will increase so resistance of the strain gauge will increase now resistance of the strain gauge will increase now understand right and if i use these strain these metal wire strain gauges bonded metal wire strain gauges if i take like uh, this uh, strain gauges if i want to construct if i want to construct uh, some western bridge by using this what i have to do i have to take four i have to take four strain gauges for this purpose so for example for example let us suppose this is the strain gauge pattern uh, sorry this is the basic uh, base material and i am drawing here some strain gauge pattern like this now what i will do is i will connect this terminal to this terminal okay and i will take another strain gauge uh, pattern for this and i will make a strain gauge pattern on to this these are two outlets now uh, output terminals now i will connect these two now and i will take another strain gauge pattern like this and i will connect now i will connect here i will uh, attach i will attach a strain gauge pattern here these are two terminals now and i will connect this two now see here this is r1 this is r uh, let us suppose i will uh, draw here strain gauge now uh, sorry piston bridge now so let us suppose this piston bridge okay 
okay this is these are two terminals of bridge and bridge so r1 r2 r3 uh, sorry r3 r4 now this becomes r1 this pattern will be will behave like r2 this behave like r3 and this behave like r4 see for r1 at one place there is r2 for uh, at other end there is r4 r2 r4 for r2 at one end there is r1 and at another end there is r3 for r2 for one end there is r1 at other end there is r3 okay for r3 at one end there is r2 at other end there is r4 for r3 at one end there is r2 at the other end there is r4 and for r4 and for r4 at one end there is r1 at other end there is r3 for r4 at one end there is r3 at other end there is r1 so i will make strain gauge pattern like this and i will again make it work as a western bridge so if i apply force torque temperature etc 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 as an input then this metallic wires will elongate or stretch depending upon the input and now the resistance will change such that i will get output current here like this i will get output current like this okay and output current is a measure of applied force applied temperature applied by the torque etc etc applied load etc 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 okay to measure load i will use this type of strain gauge to measure force of uh, uh, measure force and temperature i will use this type of strain gauge bond strain gauge i will use okay so this is unbonded metal wire strain gauge this thing is uh, this is unbonded metal wire strain gauge and this is example for bonded metal wire strain gauge and third one is bonded metal foil strain gauge Bo bonded metal foil strain gauge what do you mean by a bonded metal foil strain gauge what is the difference between bonded metal wire and bonded metal foil means for example if i want to measure temperature for example if i want to measure temperature by using the strain gauge since the strain gauge wire here i am using as some diameter okay so uh, this metal wire strain gauge will absorb temperature fast sorry sorry will absorb temperature and it will take some time to absorb total temperature and if i remove the input then the strain gauge wire strain gauges take some time to cool down so this is my disadvantage for that purpose i am moving on to bonded metal foil strain gauges okay bonded metal wire ante ee ee metal ee strain gauge wire lu rod shape lo untayandi of course mana wire shape lo rod ga untay anamata rod laga untay very thin not of micrometers that's it but uh, bonded metal foil bonded metal foil strain gauge ichchatapudiki ribbon laga untundandi okay difference in 
అంటే ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ లెటస్ టేక్ ఐరన్ రాడ్ ఐరన్ రాడ్ మీరు గ్యాస్ పోయి ఆన్ చేసి రాడ్ ని పెడితే తొందరగా వేడెక్కుతుందా లేకపోతే ఒక అట్ల పెనం తీసుకొని దాని మీద మీరు దాని మీద మీరు టెంపరేచర్ ఇన్పుట్ ఇస్తే తొందరగా వేడెక్కుతుందా అంటే రాడ్ వచ్చేటప్పటికి థిక్నెస్ ఉంది కాబట్టి బాగాను ఇట్ విల్ టేక్ మోర్ టైమ్ టు అబ్జార్బ్ టెంపరేచర్ అదే అట్ల పెనం అంటే ఫ్లాట్ సర్ఫేస్ థిక్నెస్ తక్కువ సర్ఫేస్ అనే ఎక్కువ ఉంది కాబట్టి అట్ల పెనం తొందరగా వేడెక్కుతుంది అట్ల పెనం తొందరగా వేడెక్కుతుంది అంటే టెంపరేచర్ అబ్జార్బ్ చేసుకోవాలంటే రాడ్ షేప్ లో ఉన్న కన్నా సరే ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటేనే సర్ఫేస్ టెంపరేచర్ తొందరగా అబ్జార్బ్ చేసుకుంటుంది ఓకే బాగుంది టెంపరేచర్ డిసిపేట్ అయిపోవాలి టెంపరేచర్ డిసిపేట్ అయిపోవాలి తగ్గిపోవాలి అనుకుంటే రాడ్ షేప్ లో ఉన్నది టెంపరేచర్ ని తొందరగా డిసిపేట్ చేయలేదు ఎందుకంటే థిక్నెస్ ఎక్కువ కాబట్టి తొందరగా టెంపరేచర్ కూల్ అయిపోదు అదే అట్ల పడం తీసుకుంటే సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా ఎక్కువ ఉంది కాబట్టి థిక్నెస్ తక్కువ ఉంది కాబట్టి టెంపరేచర్ తొందరగా పంపించేస్తుంది బయటకి తొందరగా కూల్ అయిపోతుంది అనమాట మీన్స్ ఇఫ్ ఐ టేక్ స్ట్రెయిన్ గేజ్ ప్యాటర్న్ సచ్ దట్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్స్ థిక్నెస్ ఈస్ వెరీ స్మాల్ అండ్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ లాంగ్ సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా హై సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా లార్జ్ సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా then it can absorb temperature fast and also it can dissipate temperature fast so for that purpose for the measuring of temperature i am going for bonded metal foil strain gauges bonded metal foil strain gauge and it will be ribbon laga untayandi it will be ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటాయి అనమాట థిక్ గా ఉండవండి ఇవి ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటాయి ఓకే ఇలా ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటాయి రైట్ ఇలా ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటాయి ఓకే వెరీ ఫ్లాట్ సర్ఫేస్ ఇలా ఫ్లాట్ గా ఉంటాయి అనమాట సో ఇఫ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఫ్లాట్ ఇఫ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఫ్లాట్ దెన్ if these are flat then it can absorb temperature fast and it also dissipate temperature fast these are now terminals a and terminals b there is a difference between bonded metal wire and bonded metal foil strain gauge okay and next coming to i am arranging all this sputter deposited strain gauge means in this uh, bonded metal wire and metal foil strain gauge what i am doing i am attaching this uh, strain gauge wire pattern onto this base material by using some adhesives gum so i can say since i am attaching this with the gum there is a, uh, i have to talk about lifetime of the strain gauge material why because gum wall atukkunna appudu tarata tarata oodi povachu gum oodi povachu after some years so lifetime will decrease lifetime will decrease in order to overcome this uh, disadvantage in order to overcome this disadvantage i am moving on to sputter deposited or vacuum type thermo uh, vacuum type of uh, uh, this uh, strain gauges 
Okay. So what I will do? What I will do? Means I will take a vacuum chamber like this. I will take a vacuum chamber like this. So this is a vacuum chamber. Okay. On to this vacuum chamber. What I will do is I will place a diaphragm here on to the top. This is a diaphragm. Diaphragm means a rubber elastic membrane. Which senses pressure, which senses pressure, there is a diaphragm. What I will do is, I will take, uh, here there is a, uh, here there is a, a chamber here, to place some, to place some uh, strain gauge material. Strain gauge is made of copper nickel chrome nickel nickel iron alloys so this is that material this is that material and uh, i will heat it to a high temperature i will heat it to a high temperature such that this uh, the, uh, this is a vacuum chamber okay is a sealed vacuum chamber sealed vacuum chamber right so i will heat this if i heat this what will become it will melt it will melt after some time what will happen means it tends to bubbles why because i am giving high temperature now so mari potu untu after some time, what will happen means it evaporates. The material evaporates. Material will evaporate. Evaporate type of this material like the water heat chest of ice cube heat chest, water can they put out the multi heat in heat chest there, the Avrika the Maripotundo, Alaga, it vapors can the Maripotundan water. Vapors in the Maripotuna put a pine milk plate at the cup at the Motundi. This vapor is a plate that is accumulated in the plate. So, the strain gauge pattern will be accumulated will be accumulated on this uh, diaphragm. What I am now doing is, I am taking this diaphragm out and make it cool. Okay, this is the <coughs> side view of a diaphragm. If I draw top view of a diaphragm, it is in circular shape. It is in circular shape. It is in circular shape. This is diaphragm. Okay. If I see diaphragm from side view, from side view, then it uh, it is like a straight line. Okay, that's it. That this I, I have drawn here. So on this uh, diaphragm. What is happening is strain gauge pattern is accumulated. Strain gauge pattern is uh, accumulated here. Means uh, total, total, totally there is a strain gauge pattern now here. Uh, sorry, strain gauge material is accumulated here. Strain gauge pattern diaphragm okay diaphragm if i cool it down okay if i guess but the diaphragm by dc and cool chest then the pattern motta emotundante ee vidhanga 
కూరైపోతుంది అనమాట ఈ డయాఫ్రమ్ మీద అంటే ఐఎమ్ నాట్ యూజింగ్ ఎనీ ఎడసూస్ హియర్ బట్ బట్ దిస్ మెటీరియల్ ఈజ్ నౌ అటాచ్డ్ టు దిస్ డయాఫ్రమ్ డయాఫ్రమ్ అండ్ నౌ వాట్ ఐ విల్ డూ ఈజ్ ఐ విల్ హెచ్ దిస్ హెచ్చింగ్ మీన్స్ రిమూవింగ్ ఆఫ్ అన్వాంటెడ్ మెటీరియల్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఫ్రమ్ ద ట్రైన్ గేజ్ ప్యాటర్న్ ఓకే సో వాట్ ఐ విల్ డూ ఈజ్ ఐ విల్ రిమూవ్ లైక్ దిస్ ఓ షిట్ ఓకే ఐ విల్ టేక్ అండ్ ద డయాగ్రామ్ నో టు మేక్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ సీ హియర్ this is uh, now diaphragm and what i am doing is now what i am doing is i am making a strain gauge pattern like this strain gauge pattern like this okay i am making a strain gauge pattern like this see here this is equal to this rendu okate kagapothe nen ikkada em chesanu ante ee shape lo maatrame ee strain gauge pattern unde vidhanga migatha plus lo strain gauge pattern unda kodani vidhanga nen mottham geekesan anamata indi geekesan indi etching ante remove chesaru anamata okay now this is one terminal for me and this end the terminal for me now it will act as a strain gauge now it will act as a strain gauge okay so this is the construction of strain gauges this is about construction of strain gauges in our previous topics we have seen thermocouple in that thermocouple if i attach two or more thermocouples it is called thermopile thermopile okay and uh, we have seen piezoelectric crystal if i attach two crystals if i attach two piezoelectric crystals if i attach two piezoelectric crystals then i call it bimorph and i call it bimorph and now and now if i attach two strain gauges it's called rosette r o s e t t e rosette r o s e t t e see here see here this this is one strain gauge this is one strain gauge and this is another strain gauge okay i am attaching these two these two strain gauges so if i see here if i draw a straight line at the center of the strain gauge and another straight line for this center of strain gauge and the angle if i want if i draw the angle between these two strain gauges the angle is 90 degrees the angle is 90 degrees that's why it is called 90 degrees planar rosette okay if you take this example if you take this example if i draw one straight line at the center of the strain gauge and another straight line at the center of this strain gauge and another straight line from the center of this strain gauge then the angle the angle between 
then the angle between these two strain gauges and the angle between successive strain gauges is uh, 60 degrees it is 60 degrees that's why it's called 60 degree rosette turn mod okay 60 degree rosette if you see here this 60 degree rosette is placed in a form of delta that's how it's called 60 degree delta rosette and i'm using three string here that's why three element 60 degree delta rosette if you see here i'm using two elements here that's why it's called a two element two element the angle between these two uh, uh, strange edges is 90 degrees that's why it's called 90 degree i'm using planar here plane here it's called planar project okay this is also planar i'm using here, here also i'm using 90 degrees see here this is this is the center of this strain gauge and uh, this is the center of this strain gauge if i take angle it is 90 degrees so if i add two strain gauges it's form it will form rosette okay this is all for today's class any doubts any doubts no sir okay i'm dropping this dust now okay right okay sir